Split pushing is a tactic that aims to achieve victory through attrition by applying constant pressure across the map to take towers and build large leads by avoiding risky teamfights. Today, we'll take a look at how G2 was able to use split pushing effectively at MSI. It's time to level up. Lesson one. To draft for a successful split push, it is necessary to have winning matchups for your solo lanes and a safe bot lane jungle trio. Let's take a look at G2's draft from their first game against SKT. G2 gets some of the strongest solo lane picks possible with Jace and Ryze. Both are sure to win their 1v1s in the split push later on because of their range, high damage, and because they don't rely on large cooldowns with their ultimates to fight. The reason why these picks are so important to G2 is because a good split push is all about pressure. By ensuring they have excellent duelists with strong pushing capabilities, they can expect to be able to pressure the side lanes. One way to guarantee your lanes come out on top is to pick an early game jungler that can help snowball them. For that, few are better than Elise, one of the strongest early tower diving champions thanks to her repel. G2 makes sure to pick her up to play around Wonder in the early game. G2 also draft a safe core. With Zaya's self-peeling ultimate and the mobility of Rakan, this duo should be able to play safe and not get jumped on by SKT. With this draft, G2 has all the tools they need to execute their split push. Lesson two, it is important to synchronize pressure on the map. By exerting pressure in multiple lanes simultaneously, you ensure the enemy team has no ability to make a play without losing something in return, and can often shut them down from acting entirely. G2 demonstrate this in their game versus the Flash Wolves. Nearing the 20 minute mark, G2 are in a slight lead as a team, but their solo laners have built up significant advantages. At 1930, G2 hard push both mid and bot lane, while Wonder sets up a slow minion wave crash in the top lane. During the time, Betty must sit mid and clear the wave. The rest of G2 starts collapsing on the top lane. By the time the wave reaches the tower, G2 already have four members in the top lane, compared to the two of Flash Wolves. As Flash Wolves move to respond, Caps has already roamed mid and pushed the next wave in. Given this situation, Flash Wolves have no good choice. If they were to force a fight top lane, they might save that tower, but Caps would be able to take down mid. Instead, they sacrifice their top lane to save mid. It's a lose-lose situation for the Flash Wolves. However, when pro teams do not coordinate their pressure effectively, they will run into trouble, and G2 is no exception. Here we see Caps pushing up top lane trying to clear the wave, but his team is not ready to put damage on the inhibitor towers or take a dragon. This is the single biggest mistake that players in solo queue will make as well. Pressuring towers in one lane while the rest of their team is not in a position to punish elsewhere in the event that that player is collapsed upon. I'm looking at you, Riven mains. So make sure to keep your eye on the minimap and only extend forward to go for a trade or hit a tower when you know your team can make a counter move elsewhere. It's not your team's fault if you get killed pushing a side lane while they're all in the base. Lesson three. Know your weaknesses, know your strengths. Split push comps are typically weaker than their opponents in a full 5v5 teamfight, but are stronger in their respective matchups and smaller skirmishes. So instead of running headfirst into a teamfight, divide the map and play for fights with a numbers advantage. In their win versus Team Liquid, G2 recognized that a 5v5 could be risky. So instead of contesting TL at the Drake, they push mid and set up a dive against TL's strongest member, Impact. It seems obvious, but do not take unnecessary fights. Teams will often make the mistake of contesting every single objective, but the optimal play is usually to trade it for something else on the map. Around Baron though, sometimes you can't avoid a fight. Knowing this, G2 decided to break down what should have been a 5v5 into two smaller skirmishes. They played to their strength of Caps in an isolated fight. Without five players to burst down his Silas, Caps was unkillable in the 1v2. This gave the rest of his team a free fight with a numbers advantage while Caps held off both Team Liquid solo laners. G2 were able to use this fight to take the Nexus, but even if they weren't able to end the game right there, they would have surely taken the Baron. And once Baron is secured for a team with strong solo lanes like G2's, the inevitable split push is near impossible to counter and will almost always result in a victory. 
So remember, next time you want to try to split push your way to victory, make sure to set yourself up for success in the draft. Coordinate with your allies to pressure multiple points on the map simultaneously and play to your strengths of solo matchups and skirmishes. I hope you gained enough experience to level up, and while you don't get IP for that anymore, maybe you'll gain some LP instead. To see more high-level gameplay and G2 back on the Rift, make sure to tune into the LEC, which returns Friday, June 7th. Until next time.